Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. In today's video, we're actually going to deep dive into Wirecast. This is part two. In our first video, we learned what is Wirecast. We learned how to set up a shot. We learned how to add cameras, add audio. Today, we're going to be deep diving into the settings, and we're going to really look at how to publish your project. Of course, there's several great places that you can go to learn more about Wirecast. I recommend heading over to teachercast.net. We have a lot of great resources, tutorials. And if you like this video, please take a moment and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a comment below. We certainly want to hear from you and learn about the projects that you're working on in your classroom. So let's dive back into Wirecast. Now, again, this is Wirecast version 9. Just came out at the beginning of May 2018. In our first video, we walked through all of the great steps here of how to get your Wirecast screen just looking like this. Now, I'm going to reverse that because we're going to talk about some of the settings and we're going to go into some of the preferences here. So I am going to grab my Wirecast handle here and I'm going to bring this up. And you can see here I have our three uh, menus here. So, or our three video shots, I should say. Now, in our first video, we learned how to add these different cameras, how to set this up. So if you haven't watched part one of this tutorial, please go back and check that out. We certainly want to have you do that. Now, you'll notice here that the bottom is a little bit choppy, right? Like I'm not completely fluid, but up on the top, I am a little fluid. So I want to show you some of these settings. We're going to manage our way up to here under our Wirecast menu, and I'm going to go on to Preferences. Now, here we have our preference pane. Now, by default, this just opened to software updates. And you'll notice that today um, we just actually upgraded our copy to Wirecast. Woohoo! Now, the neat part about Wirecast 9 is that if you purchase a copy, you have free updates for a full year. That's different than in the past. And so what I mean by that, I'll move this out of the way. So what I mean by that is I purchased this as a copy of Wirecast 8. And within the calendar year, Wirecast 9 just dropped. We got the free updates. And I think Wirecast updates a few times point releases um, in the middle of those cycles. So definitely, uh, you know, wonderful. And, and you know, bravo, Wirecast. We love the new stuff. Keep all the great things coming. Let's uh, Let's make this a little bit there we go so just a few things when we're in our general pane here we have a couple settings now this is the one that we talked about in our first video open last document on startup i used to have that checked off i don't anymore because i'm running so many different wirecast um projects I, I don't want the last one to open up so my personal preference now i'm not doing that show landing page on startup Yes, I want to see the landing page so I can choose the project that I want. Again, we talked about that in our first video. Uh, feedback detection. When you're dealing with mixers, when you're dealing with microphones, when you're dealing with headphones, keep that on. If not, you're going to get massive feedback if you hit the wrong button. And feedback detection, to my knowledge, basically says, oh, loud noise, shut everything down. And then I think it gives you a little warning on there. So I always have that clicked off. Show number of viewers. This is actually a really cool feature. So when we're broadcasting live, which by the way, we do every Wednesday night on the Tech Educator podcast, 830 on teachercast.tv, um, we can actually see how many people are watching on Facebook, how many people are watching on Twitch or YouTube, and how many comments there are. And then what I do is I have three monitors that I'm looking at here. I can actually keep an eye on the Facebook and the YouTube stuff over in this monitor, and I can keep a track of my guests over here. So I kind of have, uh, you know, spider webs myself here, but that is an awesome, awesome feature here. And then the last one here, send diagnosage and usage information. A um, little word about that. My personal advice do it. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had a problem. I actually had a corrupt file. I sent the usage information in, and literally within 24 hours, Telestream got back to me. We had a nice little email dialogue. They fixed everything for me. They were awesome. So definitely, um, you know, do that stuff. Like if you have a, a copy of Office, send that stuff back, send it to Apple. Um, again, my preference on that, but Telestream Absolutely. I've been working with working with Telestream for the last four or five years at this point. Um, awesome service. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Maximum reconnect attempts. Um, I just leave this as three. And then audio 
Um, interface, this is my USB mixer. You can see I've got a few things over here. All right, performance. This is video display rate. I just say keep it on 30 frames. You really don't need to be messing around unless you know what you're doing and you're doing sports. Maybe you want to up it to 60, but 30 frames is certainly fine. Now, everything you see, let's see, I'll point here. Everything you see here on the screen, you'll notice it's moving um, slow. But it's moving, and that's because here I have live icons checked. If I uncheck that, you'll notice that I'm moving around right now. You can see my hands up on top, but the tiles are not. So if I click on live tiles one more time, here it is. Let's see. If I move that to 60, you'll see there's a little bit of lag, and that's okay for me. All right. License. We have that there. And then under software updates, we have that. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are awesome. Um, a lot of times when you watch me do my shows, I'm looking right at the cal uh, the camera, and my hand is on the keyboard, and I'm going like one, two. I always set these up, so I'll show you here real quick. I can hit the plus sign. I'm going to call this keyboard shortcut one, and I'm going to record the shortcut of one. So I know that one is one. In other words, one here, one here. Now, what I can do with that is I can come over here and I can keyboard shortcut one. And then I can come up here and I can say two. And again, I can call this, you know, um, top camera, right? Like I can do that. And when I record the shortcut, I can call that two. So I've got one and I've got two. So over here, I've got camera angle one. I've got camera angle two. And now just by, you know, you can see me pushing my finger right here. I've got one, two, and you'll notice that right here on the screen, the shots are moving back and forth. So keyboard options are amazing. Don't go too crazy. Don't put like a, Z, a Q and an X and an L or an L. Numbers are great, right? Like have your hand here. I'm going to show you it, looking at this middle screen here. Whenever I record, I have my keyboard and I put my keyboard right here and I have my hand right here on it. So that way here I can be commanding the, the number keys. And then over here on this hand, I have my mouse. I have my trackpad. And that way I've got social media over here on this screen. I've got my guests over here on this screen. I've got my wire cast over here. And I've got a little cockpit command center. Um, I'm a musician. I call this my podium, right? Lots of different things here. So we're going to move on from here. Now, controller, I don't have anything, but if you did have a MIDI controller or something where you were able to put some shots together, you can do that. And then, of course, advance, um, you've got use high-quality video and disable IP. So those are the settings that you want to be looking at. Lots of great stuff that's in there. So that's how you set up Wirecast as a software platform. Let's talk about how you move Wirecast outside of the software platform. What happens when you're all ready to go? How do you do things? We have a few buttons up here that we still haven't spoken about. We have this button here, which is the button to start our stream. Now, the nice thing about Wirecast is that you can completely um, stream live without recording to your hard drive. You can stream to your hard drive without recording to YouTube or Facebook or something. My advice is try both, right? Like if you've got a machine that can run it, um, try both, right? You know, I've had situations where I told you that I had a corrupt file. Um, Wirecast froze. I was doing an interview with a few guests, um, which mean my hard drive was frozen on it. But because it was streaming, YouTube was still picking it up. And so I actually had YouTube like save the show because we were going, we were going and going and going really well. And because it was streaming, YouTube saved the show. So um, I always recommend do both, right? Like you can go to YouTube with an unlisted video. So nobody knows that it exists or that it's there. So that stream, that's just on or off over here. We have a few different options. I'm going to click on record to hit this onto my hard drive. Now, before I do that, I want to come up here and I want to click on output output here i've got a few different options but i'm going to go here to output settings and in output settings there we go this shows all the different destinations that i want to go to i can go to an rtmp server i can go directly to my hard drive at mov or mp4 i can go to any number of these services so personally i do youtube i do facebook and i do uh twitter at the same time you might go to live stream or Twitch or Vimeo or whatever you want to go to. Um, 
But for right now, I'm just going to show you basically how to save to your hard drive. And, and a lot of these are the same kinds of settings here. So I'm going to type in MP4. Sorry, I'm going to type in MOV. And I'm going to hit OK. And this screen here is going to bring up what do I want to do? I want to record to disk. And you can see over here it says record to disk. Now, I can change that. I can say um, hard drive record. Where am I going? I can record to disk. Again, I can always change this here. You'll see if I go over and I click on YouTube, this changes a little bit. We'll get that in a setting in a second here. So if I come over here to save it as MOV, I've got my different encoders, right? Like, do I want to use 1920 by 1080, 1280 by 720, or 854 by 940? I'm saving this to my hard drive. So I want to do 1280 by 720. I'm just going to keep this here. There's no reason right now to record a podcast at 1920. No reason at all. Audio track selection. Right now, I just keep this as one um, for two reasons. Number one, I don't know too much about the feature yet. And number two, I have no need to change it at all. Then over here, I have my files. Of course, you know, I can just I can, you know, tell this I can hit browse. I can go anywhere on my hard drive of where I want this file. This is a neat feature here. Do I want to only use the file name, meaning in this case, every time I hit record, it'll be called my stream. If I click the middle button, auto increment, that means the first one will be called my stream zero. The next one will be called my stream one, my stream two. And then over here, we have timestamp on our file names. I, I think that just adds a few more extra pieces of, uh, of data here. So that's the basic way to set that up. Now, we can add another one. I'm going to add, let's say, YouTube. And we've seen this screen a couple minutes ago. I can say name YouTube. And it's important to put the name in there because you can have more than one YouTube channel. You can have more than one Facebook channel. Destination YouTube, all of these different settings. Now, I'll, I'll stop here and just kind of talk about how I do things and why I do things. Whenever I'm doing a live show, I record to my hard drive in high def, the highest that I can go. Again, don't need 1920. But when I'm broadcasting live to YouTube, I always back it down to one of these lower settings. Like, I don't need to be streaming a podcast of just me and my friends talking at high def resolution. No reason to do that to my, uh, you know to my system like that just overloads your cpu that overloads your ram that overloads your, your all these different things right so i always output at 480 by th at 30 and i'm but i'm recording to the hard drive at a higher resolution with the idea that i'm going to um eventually delete what youtube has and upload in its place a fully edited show with bumpers and trailers and the whole deal that i use my video editing software on so over here, I can authenticate, and then under event type, I want to go live now, meaning as soon as I hit the button, it's on, or do I want to call this an upcoming or a completed? And these are all the different YouTube settings. I don't want to get into that right now, but you've got those different options. For anybody that wants to go into Facebook, it's similar. Here we have our Facebook logo. Now we can schedule the show, or we can post to our pages, profile, groups, events, and here, because this is a Facebook post, we can put a title on it. So in other words, as you're streaming, as you're searching through your YouTube's, wow, as you're searching through your Facebook stream, you can see the title, you can see the description, and I find that that, of course, helps um, people know what they're looking for and whether they can find it or not. So these are just different settings. I'll show you quickly here the one for Twitter, because that's the other one that I use. And real simple, destination, what's your encoder, and then you can add as many um, accounts that you want. It says copy the user code. And then over here in another window that you can't see, it's basically put up a, uh, a Twitter wall for me. So lots of different things that we can do. Let's get back into this. I'm going to hit can't. Actually, you know what? I'm going to remove the YouTube and I'm just going to have the hard drive here because I'll show you my point. I'm going to hit YouTube. Okay. And then when I want to record, I hit the record button. It takes a couple seconds, but right now I am recording to my hard drive. And you can see I've got my frames that I've dropped, 30 frames per second. I'm, th I'm right now at 3,700 kilobits a second. And right now my system CPU is at 313% here. So I got 64 gigs of RAM in this thing. So we're doing pretty good with that. You can toggle these things back and forth if you're looking for that. So lots of neat stuff here. And so that really was taking Wirecast, looking at the settings, looking at the output, 
And in a third video, we're going to look at how to really dive into Wirecast and get some of these nice juices flowing here. And I'm going to show you how to work with apps like Canva and Photoshop and all those different graphic -y things to really make a nice looking screen. So stick around. If you haven't checked out our first video yet, please check that out. The descriptions are below. Please make sure you subscribe to this video. Leave any comments on the video. I want to know what you're thinking about all this stuff. If you have any broadcasting questions, you can certainly reach out to us. You can find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voice message over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. And of course, you can always email us at feedback at teachercast.net. We want to hear from you. And so thank you guys so much out there for watching part two of our introduction to Wirecast 9. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.